My name is Pastor Josh Lai and I am very joyful to come your way with these editions of the Grace Spills with regards to the Caris movement as we go to the campuses with a radical message of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I'm so buzzing with joy to come your way once again with this edition of the Grace Fields. And these are a compilation of questions that uh, we are just about answering um, due to the fact that the 12 episodes I did, there have been several, several questions uh, that people would want clarity to. Um, anytime you talk about grace, uh, people have a lot of misrepresentations and misinterpretations and uh, certain perspectives and understanding of grace. And if we don't clarify some of these things, it makes um, the topic a bit um, complex and, and sometimes winding if you are not careful. But grace is very simple, very, very simple. And we're going to break down some of these and get you to have clarity to what the grace of God actually um, epitomizes for the believer. And all of us are supposed to live in grace and it's, it's what God gave you as a believer. And if you are not born again, this is the time I want to invite you to come and enjoy grace. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have life. The moment Jesus comes into your life, grace walks into your life and you live a life of grace, which is a life of grace. I have Susan here today to help me do this and she's gonna be more like my uncle today as I try as much as possible by the grace of God to answer all your questions. Let's enjoy this together. Thank you, Pastor Joshua, for having me. It's such an honor to do this Q&A session with you. My joy, pleasure, and same here. Yeah. You're looking great. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, how do we start this? Um, I've been a fan of your Grace Gospel for some time now. I think I've been very consistent with okay. the, the 12 weeks of your postings. And I've had the opportunity to jot down certain questions that I would want to ask. And first of all, I'll start with the um, grace and obedience. Growing up, we were, tra we were thought to trust and obey. I mean, there's this song that we all knew. Mm. It's a very popular song that we all knew. And it tells us that obedience is a success. Uh, it leads us to victory. It's a key to victory. But how does grace, how does obedience work under grace? Okay, wonderful. Well, so basically what we have known traditionally is that you perform and your performance gives you God's acceptance. Okay. Now, it's the other way around. God, by His grace, has accepted you. And by His acceptance, you receive grace to obey Him. Okay. Good. So, the former tells us that you need to achieve obedience. The latter tells us that grace helps you to obey. Now, I don't achieve anything to become my father's child. I am born into the family and so far as I'm born into the family, I am a father's child. Okay? So my obedience to my father doesn't necessarily make me his child. I am a child, not by obedience, but by birth. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. So that's how it starts. But then, I actually decorate my sonship by my obedience to my father. 
That's why Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and do what? And glorify your Father which is in heaven. So he's already your Father. But then your good works bring glory to him as a son or a daughter. That's it. Okay, amazing. So I'll move on to my second question. Yes, please. Um, we've been, this whole grace gospel is new to us, to me. Okay. Yes, because fine, I grew up in a Christian family and all that, but there are certain things that is now being revealed mm -hmm. to us that is giving us a clear understanding of what Christianity is all about. So we celebrated Easter yes, not indeed, quite yes. not quite long ago and then the understanding of it is finished mm. as Christ said on the cross mm -hmm. it gives a different meaning it's, I used to interpret it as he, he is done and he's just dying off but oh, okay yes but then the new with this new grace gospel it gives us understanding that his work as God coming to save humanity is done. Mm -hmm. And now the grace has given us a new room mm -hmm. to operate. Mm -hmm. So I would want to ask, if, if so, then what does God, if the work of Christ is done, what does God require of me? What is work under grace? Okay, what is work under, under grace. grace? That's beautiful. So I think we need to continue from the first question. So now you know that your work doesn't make you a son. Mm -hmm. You are rather a son. And because you are a son, okay, you are graced to work the works of your father. Definitely. Uh -huh. Are, are you getting the point? But you don't work to achieve sonship. So Christ has finished. Man by himself can never please God. So that's exactly what Christ did. If you can please God by yourself, you don't need Christ, Christ Jesus. Yes. You don't need him. It is he who has made us the righteousness of God in himself. So you see, God no more looks at what I do to acknowledge who I am or to accept me. He looks at the finished work yeah. of Christ to accept me. That so is... Apostle Paul says, I am accepted in his beloved. Isaiah also makes us know that your, your, your righteousness is like a filthy rag. Right. Okay? It's like a filthy rag. What it means is that no matter how good you can be, your goodness can never, please me. Can never ever come to the standard for God's acceptance. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. Alright? So, all of us, from the Pope to the least, child of God who doesn't have any title are dependent on the righteousness of Christ which he did for us through the finished work on the cross by his death his burial, burial and resurrection okay. that has paved the way for us so the point is that it's like you going to a palace now you are not fit by your standard, by your dress, by your background to be in the palace. He comes as the king of the palace, okay, and then brings you up to speed and then takes you into the palace. So he made you to fit in and so he can bring you to where he is. So that's exactly what Christ has done for you and I. Mm -hmm. So whatever work 
we do cannot and I can say again cannot add up to what he has already done now the moment we say that then it means that what he did with us was not complete and he needs further upgrading and that's exactly the kinds of messages we preach in churches today now when you were talking you said this new grace gospel <laughs> it is not new that is what the word of god has been from the beginning the after the, the understanding death has been different. of christ it is the understanding or how we've been taught or growing how up we've been taught growing up that has actually affected the way we believe okay yes so all through most christians are now trying hard by themselves to complete to do something to impress god mm -hmm. okay but christ who is the express image of the invincible god has done all the work to complete you and i so we don't need to do any other thing to add to what he has done. He has already finished. What we do <laughs> is that we acknowledge who we are in him and because of what he has made us, we live just like he is. Mm 